Man, I had such a good high school experience. I played three sports. Um, I played softball, basketball, and soccer. Um, and, you know, I, I basically, everything you could sign up to do, I signed up to do it. And uh, one of the things that I think was really important about my experience at Melville is that I had teachers and coaches who were supportive of me doing so many things. In addition to her prowess on the field as a player, she was an even better person. Megan was highly respected, not only by her teammates, but her classmates. She was extremely team oriented. So I went to St. Louis University. Uh, I, you know, thought about playing any number of places. And when Tim Champion brought me down for a visit, there's something that just clicked for me that felt, felt right. Um, it was pretty powerful to get to play in front of my hometown crowd in college. She was probably the thing, the, the one player that turned our program around. Um, we were a pretty good team at the time, but when she came in, we started winning conference titles, going to the NCAA tournament. Um, great player, but just a, a better kid. Um, and then she went on and played professionally. She was the first player drafted out of St. Louis U for the fe uh, female drafted out of St. Louis U for the pros. You know, I always wanted to be a pro soccer player. I wanted to play on the U.S. national team. That was my dream. And so out of SLU, I was drafted. Uh, I was a second round draft pick to the Carolina Courage in 2003. I went over to England and was on trial with Arsenal and Leeds United. So I came back to the States. I played for the Asheville Splash in the W League, which is where I live now. I came back to St. Louis. I played for River Cities FC, uh, which is a club owned by Jeff Cooper, who was trying to get a Major League Soccer expansion franchise. I ended up working for him on the business side of the game, which really taught me a lot about you know the role I'm in now. Um, I decided, I knew I wasn't done playing. I played for River Cities for two seasons and I also knew I wanted to go to law school. So I went to Boston, uh, left that job, left St. Louis, went to Boston and went to Northeastern School of Law, which was an awesome experience for me. So I started practicing law. I've been a partner at a law firm here, uh, very small firm. I've been here for 10 years, Brazel and Burke PA, where I've largely done civil rights litigation and criminal defense. She has been the greatest partner uh, that I've ever had and she's just, her, her talent and skill as an attorney um, probably is uh, outpaces what she did on the soccer field. Her character as a person, her compassion, her ability to be empathetic, her ability to be non-judgmental. Um, these are all qualities, her ability to love. I mean, she's got a lovely family. I'll, honestly, I remember the first time thinking I wanted to be a civil rights lawyer was in the fifth grade when I was learning about the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s, the campaign for Southern equality. And so CSE for short is an LGBTQ civil rights advocacy group based here in Nashville that she launched and has now grown and is a pretty formidable organization in the Southern organizing landscape. Um, and so as a lawyer, I have uh, had the opportunity to represent CSE. We've written, well, I represented them during the We Do campaign, which was a, a movement to push for marriage equality here in the South. and we won. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I've also done a lot of work around anti-trans bills in the South. Um, you know, there's some don't say gay laws on the book still uh, that we've filed lawsuits and won. Um, we've won the right to adopt for families to adopt their children in Mississippi. Uh, so I've filed briefs in North Carolina, Fourth Circuit, the U.S. Supreme Court on those issues and also worked with some really brave and amazing clients in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Mississippi. And of course now, uh, we aren't practicing law anymore because she has gotten this opportunity to head up the National Women's Soccer League Players Association as the executive director. Just a few months ago, the NWSL Players Association, which organized in 2017, I've worked with them since then, made me a full-time job offer. It's, it's a dream job that I never thought would be remotely possible given the history. And so I am now the executive director of the labor union that represents women's pro soccer players. The Melville girls soccer team has been known throughout the area as being highly competitive. And Megan Burke was a big part of that. She is dedicated. She's incredibly bright. She's one of the hardest workers that I ever had on my team. And she's just a good person all around um, and did a lot with her life and is still continuing to do a lot with her life. You know, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, those are really formative years. And it's clear that what happened at your district in that school um, was a really, really positive thing for Megan. I think one of the things about Melville that I think was really important to my education and experience was the diversity of our student body. 
Um, you know, we had at that point in time, we had a lot of students coming over from Bosnia after the, you know, the conflict of the, of the 90s. Um, we had, you know, an integration program that was really robust. Melville was a place where you could really discover who you were. It had a diverse student body that really had a lot of love and affection for each other. And as different as we were, um, I think had some common values that have a lot to do with growing up where we did. As it really means a lot, you know, this is where my roots are. And despite having traveled a lot, moved around a lot, and, you know, now in this new job, I'm spending a lot of time with, um, you know, in, in DC with important people or New York or whatever. And this is where my roots are. And so it feels enormously, I'm, I'm very proud and it feels really special to be part of that group to get inducted into the Melville Hall of Fame.